Hey everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the 64th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Today we're going to be actually downloading some stuff off the web using Qt. Um, we're going to cover the QHttp class, um, so just go into the help system, type QHttp, and just browse over this class real quick. Um, if you're wondering what HTTP stands for, it's Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That's how, uh, that's how files are moved around the web. Uh, for example, if you go to a web page, here's my website, you notice the HTTP in front of this. It means we're using the hypertext transfer protocol. Um, part of this protocol is you make a request using git, and when I say using git, you're actually sending a packet saying get this file. The web server will turn around, see if the file exists. If it does, it sends back the file. Um, in this case, you know, looking at this, it sent back the web page. So you can see there's the contents of the web page that we downloaded. And it downloads, you know, all the images and stuff too. And if it doesn't exist, it sends back an error code. Like we'll just say index.html. And you see how it says uh, the dreaded 404 not found. Well, 404 is a status code. That's an HTTP status code. So what we're going to actually do today is we're going to make a program to download files. So we're going to say new and we're just going to say project console application and call it do HTTP and e-test next next finish finish and we've got our real basic application here now the first thing you want to do is actually add a reference into the network module Whoops! help if I could spell network And once you've added a reference to the network module, it'll rescan your project and then life goes on. You can do what you need to do. So we will add a new class. And we'll just call this downloader. My, uh, my computer's been acting, sorry, you want to inherit Q object while I'm thinking about it. My computer's been acting a little, little funky here. I installed uh, Windows 7 SP1 and I've been having all sorts of weird issues, like it blue screened on me 20 minutes ago, and it hasn't done that in about 10 years, so i um, kind of concerned that maybe Microsoft didn't get their stuff right this time. All right, now we want to include QHTTP. We also want to include QFile, and let's of course include QDebug help if I got the pound sign in there instead of the three. Now that we've got those in there, we need to <coughs> make a function that we're going to actually kick this whole process off. So we'll say void do download. And of course we need the uh, the object we're actually going to work with here. So we'll say Q HTTP and we'll just call it HTTP. That way we know what it is. And part of working with the Q HTTP class is it will, while it's downloading, fire off some signals here. Here's the signals we got to work with. You know, there's a whole bunch of them and I'm not going to get into all of them. But the ones we're really focused on are state changed, response header received, and request finished. And what these are is the state changed. Let's just click on that. There's different states of the connection. Um, unconnected, host looked up, connecting, sending, receiving. If you watch the network primer that I did uh, last night, you'll really understand what I'm talking about. This uses a TCP connection. So it's got that underlying three-way handshake. And the state change signal tells you where in that and where in that handshake you are and what the class is actually doing under the hood. The response header received is part of um, the HTTP protocol. When you request a file, it sends you the file, but in front of it, it sends a header that has uh, metadata about the file and the transaction that you're making. So the first packet always has this header, so that's when you get the header. And request finished is when the actual request is finished and you have all of the file. Um, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm sure some of you gurus out there are going to correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the QHTTP class caches it into a temp file somewhere, 
and then you can pull it out wherever you want. So without further ado, let's actually oops, flip back here and implement these. So we're just going to copy that, paste it. And then we want the response header received. Just copy that. And then we want ready read. Oops, sorry, not ready read. We want request finished. Um, you might be asking yourself, what's the difference between ready read and request finished? Well, um, ready read is fired whenever you have data in the buffer that can be read. Um, request finish is fired when the entire process is done. So if you try doing this off ready read, you may not have all of the file. You may only have a chunk of it because remember, um, you have a certain window which you can send packets in. So if you have um, exceeded that window, and let's just think of it as a bucket. Let's say you got a one gallon bucket and you're trying to transfer five gallons of water. Well, it's going to take five buckets or five packets to get this through. Now, I don't want to scare you with the details. You don't really need to know any of that to use this class. You just need to understand the concept of how that works. All right, so now that we've got our function prototypes here, let's go in here and actually implement these. And we'll say void downloader do download. And that is going to actually be where we're going to kick this whole process off here. And we're just going to implement these really quickly. All right. First thing we're going to want to do now that we've got them implemented is we're going to want to flesh out these slots. So that way we can see exactly what's going on here. So let's do the state change first. So we'll say switch state. And I'm just going to do this very quickly. K0. <laughs> I say quickly and then I goof up. Okay, K0. Break. And I'm looking at my notes, but you may have to flip back over into here and actually go state changed and state. And that way you can see which state is which value. And zero is unconnected. And there are seven states that we need to worry about here. St state one is host lookup. actually uppercase that just because I'm picky. State 2 is connecting. And really you don't need to worry about the states. I'm just doing this for illustrative purposes just so you can see you know what's going on under the hood. Um, I really want you to understand that there's a multi-part process. You don't just fire something out and the server returns data. I mean there's a whole lot that happens in the background here. Five is connect. And six, of course, is closing. All right, now our response header received. Remember, this is going to be the first packet. If we're transferring a file that takes five buckets, um, this will be the first bucket. We're going to get the response header. Now, remember, we don't actually have any real data yet. We're just getting the header or the information about the data we're going to get. So say Q debug. And we want the size. So let's just grab size. And let's grab our reference to the Q response header. And we'll say content length. And through the magic of copy and paste, we're going to add a few more things here. We want the type. Because we want to know whether we're grabbing, you know, a text file or 
an image or anything like that and we want to know the status code the HTTP status code uh, remember when I went to the web page and I typed in a file that didn't exist well that's the status code um, just for information purposes if it says 200 that means the the whole thing's okay it literally means 200 okay um, anything in the 400s means there's a problem with your request and 500 means there's a problem with the server okay now we've got our request finished and notice how there's this bool error. That's how you tell if there was an error in the whole process. So what you can say is if error then else and we'll just do q debug we can say error that way we know something bad happened. Otherwise we can say q debug Okay, that way we know, you know, the request is finished, life is good, everything goes on here. Now, this is fine and dandy, but we haven't actually told it to download anything yet. So, what we need to do is actually create our object. Say HTTP equal new, QHTTP. We'll say this is the parent class. And now we want to connect up our signals and slots. We got state changed and then this with slot. Whoops. We want the response header received. And finally, we will connect the HTTP signal. And what did we have here? We had the request finished. Now that we've got our signals and slots implemented, um, the final step of this is we need to actually request a file. So we say HTTP set host that we are setting the server and you can set it to whatever you want but I'm just going to do my server void realms just because I'm used to my server and I know how it behaves and then we want to actually get a file and we're just going to get the root of that website or the slash and what this will do once we go out to the website is it'll say okay get the base base directory here and if there's a default file the web server will serve the default file you see there's our slash right here at the end so what the web server does is says okay go to the root of the website looks for the default file which in my website's case is called default hope if I can spell default dot ASPX so if you go to slash default ASPX it's the same thing and you should note before we fire off this tarp, if we go index.html, it's going to return a 404 not found. So let's save our work and really quickly. Let's call out our class here. So we'll say down, downloader, C down. your download. Compile and run and with any luck we don't have any errors in our code here. And went faster than I could drag it over but you can see how it says connecting, sending, reading, the size, that's the size of the information. The type, the MIME type is text slash HTML. It means it's a text file. The status is 200. Remember 200 is good. And connect means we're connected. Now you notice how it didn't disconnect. Um, part of the HTTP protocol is a keep alive parameter. And what that'll do is if there's no problems with your request, it'll just keep that connection open for as long as you need it. That way you can make multiple requests off the same connection. Because making a connection, making that three-way TCP handshake is actually rather expensive and slow. So they just keep the connection open so you can just keep making requests off the same connection. Now 
let's show you what happens if we request a file that doesn't exist. Remember, index.html does not exist off my website. So we'll compile run, and you see we get different results here. We get connecting, sending, reading, 4040 for the size, type text.html, status 404. Remember, that's the not found. And then notice closing unconnected, meaning the web server just said, goodbye, I'm done with you. So that's really all you need to know about these connections. Now, before I close this tutorial, I know somebody out there is going to ask me, Brian, how do you download this to a file? Well, I'm kind of glad you asked. In the request finish, we could have OK, but we can also just dump this into a file. And I've got a directory out here. There's absolutely nothing in it. And we're going to download it to that directory. So what I'm going to do is say Q file. And we'll say file equal new. Oops, better make this a pointer. And we want to give this a name here. I'm going to throw mine in e test downloads, but you can put it wherever you want. Remember to change your slashes to the universal slash, otherwise it'll read it as an escape character. And we'll say test.txt. And then we'll say if file.open. And we want the mode, which we're just going to say append. Then we'll delete the file. That way we don't have a memory leak. But if it's open, then we want to actually write that information to the disk. So we're going to say file, write. And we want HTTP read all. And what that'll do is that'll give us a Q byte array. And we can take that Q byte array and we can just throw it right into the Q IO device, the Q file, and that'll write everything out to disk. And uh, then we'll say file. We want to flush the contents of this, make sure everything gets written to disk. And file close. There we go. Now you should also note instead of doing this off the request finish, you can actually hand it in the get as a parameter you can hand it a QIO device. So you could just make a Q file in memory and um, put a reference to the Q file pointer right here. That way, as it's getting the information, it automatically writes it off to disk for you. So you don't have to worry about the I.O. And then when the request is finished, you would just, you know, of course, flush, close, and delete your file. But I'm trying to keep this tutorial really simple and very easy to understand. So let's save our work, compile and run. And you can see how it's 4, 404 error, you know, file not found, closing, unconnected. But if we go out to our download directory, you see we now have this test.txt. And if we open this up, you see there's the contents. And this is the actual uh, information that's displayed on the web page. You can see it actually says, you know, HTTP 404. And it says, you know, the page cannot be found. So that's what this is right here. And you can actually prove that by going, you know, right click, view source. And that's what we just downloaded right there. So, anyways, I need to cut this tutorial off because uh, I'm running out of time. And, well, you know how it is with YouTube. So, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. And uh, please, you know, shoot me any questions you guys got. I enjoy your feedback. It really. Uh, keeps me on my toes and, you know, keeps me honest because sometimes I say things and think I know what I'm talking about and I really don't. So uh, just definitely keep up on that feedback.